Yeah, I'm going to call this meeting to order at uh, 7.08, please. Uh, first of all, I'm supposed to introduce Ashley Dion from the Conway School Committee. She's our new member at Frontier. Ashley, welcome. But Ashley's not here, so, but everybody knows Ashley's going to be on the board with us. Um, second, review the minutes from May 14th. Any questions about the minutes? Good that, minutes. So that Judy little, does a great job. Uh, my, my little correction, correction, I showed it to Judy. You do. I made the note in the minutes store. It's, it's funds may be used from the school choice line to pay the invoice if needed. That fifteen thousand six hundred dollars for the mini splits. Okay. Do I have a motion and a second so yet? Done. Second. Yes. All in favor? So moved. Uh, Mark, it's your turn. Already. Um, so Getting towards the end. <laughs> right? Out of brass taxes. Yes. Common sense. So yesterday I sent you the expenditure report through May. Um, through May there is $444,553 remaining or 4.4% of the budget. Um, the change from last month's budget remaining to this month's was $12,780. And so basically at this current level of spending we're going to have budget money left over at the end of the year. Um, as I mentioned, the prior school committee meeting, the over budget expenditures and spent transportation was 28,885, that's function 330. It's increased by 15,000 due to a change in placement, but that placement is a school choice placement, so it will be reimbursed in June with the, um, the true up that everybody doesn't like to work for. Is that the one that we get from the other towns and all those? Yes. We don't actually get the money in June when we get the money. No, it'll be in June. Well, it'll, it'll be in July, but it'll be June. It'll well, be June. it doesn't show up in a black suitcase out front. <laughs> that's what you're thinking. It's, just, it's about, you know, about how much we get uh, and, yeah, and, and, and the numbers that you never see. It shows up as an HC, a, ACH payment in the uh, school's account. Uh, last month, the overall sub function, 2325, had a positive balance of 7,000. But as I reminded everybody, it's a line to watch. Um, you know, continued outages, expenditures have exceeded the overall budget by $1,184. Also, uh, there was a long-term sub hired for a math teacher at the end of May, which resulted in an encumbrance of expense of $10,544. This is additional expense to the district, but it can be absorbed based on the remaining funds that we are projected to have. Um, one of the larger lines with a um, negative expenditure is building general repairs, uh, which $65,056. This includes repair of the library air conditioning of $15,600, uh, quote, expense for a generator of 8300 various year-end repairs that Bob's getting done, and a reserve for updates to the exterior door entry systems of 24100 These expenses could be charged to school choice, but based on current spending and where we look like at the end of the year, um, it looks like the, this repair line, the overall budget can handle the uh, expense to the repair line. So that being the case, it doesn't seem to make sense to transfer the expense to school choice unless the overall school budget couldn't handle it. And it, that doesn't look like it's going to be the case in June. Anybody have a... Bob, Bob, go ahead. Uh, you got uh, an encumbrance here for $20,000 for uh, Expense file storage management. Are we going to spend that? Is that something we're going to work this order out on? That was, a, that was an open PO that was set up. Yeah, eventually we are going to charge the expenses to that line. Yeah, we've got expenses, more expenses coming in. No, I think, we're, I think we're done now. No, so that's <coughs> originally. Um, Right, between Dr. Carey and, and Patty, they were talking about the file transfer yeah. and how they were going to digitize and everything. Instead, what we did um, is George and I were able to find some space in the building, bought some shelves, hired a local moving company, we brought the files over, and my staff's going through them um, at a pace. So we've saved $18,000. I believe you. But what I'm trying to say is that no longer has to say is the coverage because there's no more outstanding. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So that's another eighteen thousand you can add to that number at the end that you have. I'll just if we need it. Right. Bob, that was a good catch. 
One answer right now, all of a sudden, that's, exactly it. Every that's time. exactly it. Bob, when you have a question, can you tell us what page you're on so we're not it's on trying the second to... page? It's about the fifth or sixth item down, right. five thousand dollars. It says salary tech stipends. Yep. Now, we pay some stipends to some technical people, and if they been paid or are they encumbered, or should that be encumbered? Um. Well, I guess we'd have to look and see. I'm not familiar with what that actual payout is. I can go back and see if last year it was paid out, but... Um, and who it was to. Yeah, who it was to. Well, I just want to make sure that it gets done so we don't have to come in with an old bill in July or August. Okay. Now, get down further. Um, you got $11,500 there, um, and it's uh, stipends, curriculum, and development. Um, $11,500 left. We use those at the end of the year. Yeah, there's going to be there's so, curriculum so development that happening. That needs to be covered. Or, or it, well, it happens in the month of June. Those are the things that we pay um, teachers to come back the days after school. This Sarah runs this. Sarah okay. Mitchell runs this uh, question, but that we pay the teachers to come back and do curriculum writing and development. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I'm just saying it hasn't been it hasn't been even submitted yet. But you're right. It's part of the four hundred forty-four thousand dollars, Bob. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is. If You've got four hundred thousand, and all of a sudden you find you've got spent fifty eleven thousand here yeah. that that should have been encumbered because it's planned to spend. Maybe we don't know how much uh, how much that is going to be total. It might be not be the whole dollar amount. Well. Anyway, there's some other bigger ones. We'll just skip down to on page three. Uh, you got sixty three thousand uh, sixty two dollars in salaries. S E T L. What is that supposed to be? Special Education Team Leader. Know what it is? Not sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But there's nothing been spent in it all year. So the salary for that position has been uh, run through a different salary. It has to be. Yeah. We'll take a look and see what that one can spend it. I would probably just look at all those big numbers to see. Well, oh, there's another one, another item for 5,500 for expense. Uh, speech therapy, SDC professional. Looks like, uh, it's either that one or the one. Yeah, for uh, 5,500 bucks. It's sitting there and nothing's been spent, nothing is in cover. We probably need those are, but those are, that's an expense line item, so that's not a salary, but they may not have used it this year, so yeah, we can see what that is. So. And then there's <clears throat> what page, Bob? I'm going to be on page uh, four. Okay. And we're going to go down uh, inch and a half or so, 14878 uh, That is salaries, classroom assistance. Uh, you've got some money encumbered. Is that going to take encumbered? going to take care of all that stuff? Yes. Okay, so the 14000 almost $15,000 is going to be left over at the end of the year. Uh, then there's a 21000 down two or three more from there. And that is alternate, alternate instruction. instructional assistance. Uh, you've got encumbered at 3703 and you've got 21000 sitting there. Is that going to be uh, left over? Yep. Okay. And then down further, about an inch and a half up from the bottom, 10859 and it's expense professional, professional development, development teachers. Now that's the money that's in the contract that they, and that, that's going to get split with those. Are they qualified? Is that, if I understand it right? Usually the professional development, correct if I'm wrong, that they have to submit in April or something like that for the remaining money if it's if no one submit for it, right? They have until May 15th to submit or else it goes back to the general fund. So that's the remaining money. So nobody submitted. The general fund. So well, people did submit. Okay. And, and they're still going through something. They're, so they're still doing 
So the extra money that, that has been allotted to teachers for professional development, they're still in the process of processing those POs. So some teachers have, some teachers have, because they can claim they can get up to two thousand yeah. dollars. So some teachers are still, so those are still being processed. So right now, but that that would be in where that encumbrance is right now. Yeah, yeah. all should be. Yeah. That's why that's why there's a large number, that's why there's a large number of encumbrance right there. But that's what that ten thousand that's remaining. Oh, well, that would be remaining. Okay. That's how I'm reading. Oh, you know, yeah, and then we got payroll down the <laughs> mentor, mentor stipends for uh, thirty-five hundred and fifty dollars. You haven't spent any money on it at all. Couple of three things down. Couple of that. Thirty-five hundred and fifty dollars. Do we have mentors in the high we school? Do. Or just yes. The question is, are those things cut? Yeah, is that coming out of there? They just, all the stipends just got signed. The stipend forms yep. that's just being submitted. Okay. So that's so that this month. Yeah. That would be paid. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Always the answer. So they're still coming. Okay. We're going to uh, we'll skip page five. This one. We do have an idea what you're talking about, Bob. Uh, no, no, it's good. It's good. These are good. Okay. No, this is. We get on page seven. It means you have the institutional history. The regional transportation, you're going to have 27 grand left. Does that include all the encumbrances and everything else on the regional transportation? Yes. So there'll be 27 left, right? But that line no problem is going to the spent transportation as well. Oh, I, I realize that. Yes. Okay. Next slide. So we're going to go to page eight. You didn't ask about the food service. Directive, Bob. We talked about that last week. Okay, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying, just trying to catch up on you. Don't poke the dog. I got a circle button. I'm going to go back to it. Anyway, when you get over onto page uh, eight, you got fifty-one thousand uh, dollars left here for the heating and fuel account. Uh, all the bills are paid. I'm not sure if June's are paid yet. We might have, I'll double check and see, but I can't imagine it's going to be large. Okay. And then there's $24,000 in the electric account uh, down an inch later, the bottom one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bills are all there. Again, I'm, I'm, I'll double check, but I think we probably just have June's left. And then we got utility, water, and sewer. You got $13,850. Is a new sewer bill in there and settled? I would bet it's not, those seem to lag from what I saw. So I'm thinking that's probably not going to come until after that fiscal well, year. They sent the bills out two weeks ago. Uh, we can have it. Let me check with Paula. Okay. We got a monster. All right. Uh, if it went out two weeks ago, I'm going to guess it's probably not as good. It may, may not be two weeks. It's a good seven or eight days. Okay. And it's definitely not in there for seven days. <laughs> Then I got uh, down here the Medicare, employer Social Security Medicare tax. You're carrying uh, 15,370. Uh, is uh, that accurate? And if it's that much there, something changed with our payroll because that should have been generated by our, based upon our the payroll uh, from last year with some sort of emphatic plug the figure. Lay anybody off that made a lot of money, that wouldn't be. No, but at the time the budget was probably put together last February, you had probably had people leave during the end of the year, other people hired at a lesser rate, so that you know the Medicare rate might be a little bit higher based on what the original budget was built on. I doubt it's a hundred thousand less. Might think think Patty. What? Think Patty. Well there's there's not a hundred thousand less. Oh it's fifteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying. Anyway, then the last one is uh, Health insurance again. You're, you're saying we're going to have ninety-four thousand left in it. Is that a true figure, or we're going to have it? Because you've got you've got encumbrances of two hundred twenty-three thousand. And I asked you already if the May bills that are on the warrant tonight are already included. You say they are, so uh, I would guess that ninety-four thousand is going to be left over. It looks like it. I took it. I actually took it. I figured you'd be asking about this, Bob. So I actually took a look at last year what was budgeted, and there were 12 bills paid, and each bill comes about 
somewhere between one hundred six and one hundred eleven thousand dollars. So in totaling them up, it looks like we would have, based on what the payments are, between ninety four and ninety seven thousand dollars left. Now, last year, I noticed at the end of the, at the very end of the year, there was a true up done. Um, it, was an, it was an adjustment done at the end of the year for eighty five thousand dollars for prepaid. Um, for prepaid insurance. So I need to look into that and see what that is, but if that needs to be paid at the end of the year, there's gonna be 97,000 for that. Was, that was a screw up that we had to correct. Uh, All right. right. That was, that was only 60,000. That was the audit thing that Scanlon That was 60,000, yeah, wasn't it? The fact that the way we were doing it, we weren't doing it properly. So that's why we came up with the money last year. So I'm just then based on the anticipated payments for June, which we don't have yet, it's going to be about ninety-four to ninety-seven thousand dollars left over. Okay. All right. well, so, so Bob, Bob so Bob, if, when you, when you're going to be our warrant signer in in July, yeah, you'll have to get an email and send it to everybody how you made out with the July with the June bills, if you don't mind. Well, would you like me to, to take out the machine and, and dictate? Well, either have one of your grandkids help you do it or something, maybe. So next time, next time I'm looking for a spare change at the bottom of the sofa cushions, you're the guy I'm inviting over. Anyway, I picked this up yesterday and I told the areas I was going to go through. And I, that was 4.35 o'clock yesterday. And I, yeah. I went home and started with a pencil. Especially this one. Hey, it's better to have money left over yeah. than not. Yeah. I can remember it was 35 years ago, there were people that held the bills back, right? Because they were close and they held them back. And then in August, they brought them to us as old bills like they had just come in. Unfortunately for them, they initialed them in when they got them. And they were initialed in before June 30th. But somebody tried to push them to us and make bills. It takes a nine tenths vote. Nine tenths vote. Four passes. Billy remembers he was there. Nine tenths. Yep. Yep. No. Yep. No. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, <coughs> the only other thing quickly is I also included a um, uh, through May uh, results of special revenue account. So that's school buildings that are involved in circuit breaker, school lunch, the athletic revolving, and school choice. So if you look at that, you can see basically where we started, the revenues and expenses to date, encumbrances, and then what the current balances are. So if you have any questions about that. Yes, I do. <laughs> the Medicaid reimbursement. I know we've got a check, because I think there is showed me the figure about three months ago. And I'm just wondering where before they finish on August 31st or August 1st that we make sure we get that all that billing in so we get our money <coughs> but did we get a reimbursement uh, correct me if I'm wrong $279,000 so was it that much or was it two forty six? I know we I mean I went through those payments yes so I know I showed them to you yeah, so I didn't write it down, but it's not listed here. But I'm just wondering if the 274, if it's not a circuit breaker, is that? It shouldn't be because that kind of, that tracks with what circuit breaker is. If you look at okay. what it does, the award's supposed to be. But yeah, that's something I research because after you and I just spoke, I went through the, the fund accounts, and I don't see a fund account <coughs> for Medicaid, and I understand what you're saying. So um, we'll circle back. I'll talk to Darius in the morning. Again. Talk to Paul about where the deposit happened because it doesn't pop up on a fund on reports, so it will require a lot of digging for that. Well, uh, this, oh, I agree. Yeah, if it's there, we want to have it tracked and well reported. The school lunch fund is uh, in a negative right now. Um, do you think by the end of school that it'll be on the plus side? Um, I mean, it depends on how June goes. The thing about June is it's a short month, so that always tends, the shorter months tend to not do as well food service-wise. If you remember last month, it had like a $49,000 deficit, so it's it's caught up some with May being a good month, but uh, I won't well, guarantee. I guess my, my question is, I remember doing it in the elementary school, should we take some money from somewhere and, and try to zero it out? Or is that different when we talk in elementary school? You could pay the salary of the director 
out of the line item we have, right? And that would make that money available uh, so that we'll keep a positive balance. Because I'd rather see a positive balance on the school lunch fund than a, than a negative. I mean, well, we have to at the end of the year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can't carry a negative balance. Yeah, exactly. So we will be paying for it some some year. Year. But we're in a but we're in a we're in a month of pioneer than apparently we can. It's called creative economy. That's cancer with a K. Uh, <laughs> so I just wanted to ask that question. That's Anything else from Mark? Oh, I think we gave her enough time. Any public Who's comment? Do we come? Well, I don't know where to ask this. Should, can I ask something during public comment? Go ahead. They can reject you, <laughs> throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> they make you go the chair to the Recognizes the Damien. <laughs> um, this is there's nothing official yet, so I, I don't. It is really just more of a question. I don't know if it's a question for Darius, a question for George, or it's a question for really all of the committee. Um, but I just picked up my daughter from soccer practice, who's going to be in seventh grade next year. Half of their team is in Hatfield. Hatfield has always struggled to gain a middle school squad, girls squad, and they don't even have a JV team. So the girls that can make the varsity team, they play on the varsity Hatfield team. I guess with our own school, sometimes we have a girls middle school team, sometimes we don't, and if we don't, they play on the JV team, and then there's two JV teams or something, I don't know. So anyways, I was asked to ask the committee what it takes, can a collaborative happen um, between schools, between districts, to have some of their some of their girls play on our middle school Do team. Do it in hockey in yeah, some capacity. Greenfield and Turner's had cooperative hockey. Pioneer boys are playing football with Turner's, right? I'm going to call it swimming with them. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, but Darius has the answer. I have the answer to that. Um, we invite Hatfield to join our district. So, um, but on top of that, the <laughs> several times you cannot. So you, the co-ops have to be done by the host school because they do not have enough players, and that is not the case at Frontier. So we would, if we didn't have enough players, we could reach out to another school that says, "Why don't you come join us?" Okay. Um, behind the scenes, I mean, uh, some, you know, sometimes you're having conversations. You know, athletic directors having conversations about numbers for next year, and and so. There's, Conversations are happening. It's not just like we don't have enough. We go look around blindly. There's athletic yeah. trainers having this conversation. The issue that Hatfield has is the younger grades, and the way the rules for co-ops work doesn't work for younger grades. You can't have a co-op for middle school and then have separate varsity teams. It's not set up that way. The MIA is starting at the uh, top down. Okay. And so, um, yeah, they're so because they have a varsity team, they couldn't have a. They couldn't join us. That has never been done. So that'd be something. They should talk to their athletic director about and then bring it to district F board and see if there's anything they could do there. And but there's, I you know I just last night was my last meeting as chair of the executive board for BBIAC and this is where we approve all these. I've never seen in the six years I've been on that board anything that has anything to do with except for our scheme. You know so and then you know or you know co-op you know or you pulling up middle schoolers to play on JV so they can file you know people can file different. Exceptions. We don't fall underneath that because Frontiers of seven through twelve schools. So, but I've never the, seen. I've never seen a Frontier. And correct me if I'm wrong. That we have never had enough to have a middle school team of seventh and eighth graders for girls. I know we've always had boys. For have girls, boys. no, we've had both. Yeah, for and middle school soccer. No, 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 no. I'm just saying we never had a problem with numbers. We did. A couple of years ago, we had to combine. We had a boys and girls team. Remember that year? You gave me a hard time that we still paid the coach. Um, we cut these facts. I don't need to bring up. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the um, that. But anyway, so we we've had some years where we brought them with the bar to JV because there hasn't Not been enough right. Depending on how some shifts are, but lately that hasn't been the case. Well, Thanks for your public comments. I don't know where to ask that question. She's good. She uh, could uh, play uh, varsity. Correct. Because well, she's got under the same principle. You're, well, not, his kid's not fine. Kid. His kid's at Frontier. Kid. It's the Hatfield kids. Yeah. Tell them to try to at the Frontier. Yeah, I know. Uh, next thing is, yeah. you, is that for yeah. administration or is that for everybody? Oh, sorry, so non union salary recommendations we need to go to executive session to begin discussions on. Okay. Um, 
want to do so we could do all items? the we could do all the items prior to okay. executive sessions if you want okay regional warrant signings does this have something to do with summer schedule you have a handout that's printed sideways that said that this year on January 10th um, Regional school committees may designate one of its members for the purpose of signing payroll warrants and accounts payable warrants to allow the release of checks provided. However, the member shall make available to the board at its next meeting a record of such actions. So this is for over the summer. So uh, we need to, if we want to, so desire to follow this new um, House bill to allow us to not have to, to allow us to release bills with the member before we had to have a bunch of people sign up to come in so everybody signs it. You can elect to have one person to do it and then have that person um, report back in September. Well, we get, we get jammed, up, jammed up with the audit every year because of this, so if we can avoid that item in the audit by doing it this way, then do that. I'm gonna appoint Bob Decker and Judy Pierce as an alternate. I think you can appoint I think I wrote in both that you're willing you want to change the it's a change of practice so I think it's voted it's put in as a vote but that would be it's a vote in that way because you're also changing practice so you want to make show in dealing with finances I would say you voted I'll in. make a motion to a motion to appoint Bob Decker as our warrant signer in the, in the summertime and Judy Pierce as an alternate I'll second it any other questions, or does anybody else want to do it? The Bob, you sure? All in favor? Then you good one, don't yes. okay. you? Thank you, Bob and Judy, for being appointed. The other, um, <laughs> the next. Yeah, no. Sorry, you know, I'm yeah. taking over. Technically, you're supposed to introduce. No, no, no. I just, I just keep School going committee here. chairs with meeting. So, um, you know, I just had a conversation moments ago with the Deerfield committee regarding this. Um, it, it, there seems to be at times where I need to meet with the chairs to help set agendas, to help set direction on um, policies, um, not policies, but what we're doing at the next joint meeting or what we're doing in the next round of school committee meetings. And rather than just have the chairs come together, which I <coughs> technically could happen because you know there's not, they're not a quorum, um, I wanted to run it by all the school committees that I would like to start to do that, um, to you know help set agendas and to kind of set some direction on some things. Um, one of which we'll talk about a little bit in executive session, but um, another one being, for example, my evaluations out there now. What are we going to do with it? So unless I come up with a plan and then present it and walk it to all five of the meetings and then have all five miraculously vote the same way and how to do my thing, I need to get the chairs together to, um, to kind of go through about how we're going to move forward with that. Um, so basically I wanted to bring up people's hands and people are okay with that. It's not really a vote, it's just kind of an FYI. Um, I did kind of mention that I've seen in the past when the superintendent has um, selected members to be part of a committee without committee's knowledge of it and i just wanted to make it more everybody's transparency about if i'm pulling the chairs together why is he pulling the chairs together what's going on but that's basically to set you know to set some of these joint meetings the agendas what's important what they want to see um how can we speed them up that type you know yeah and, and uh, sometimes i sometimes feel like in an awkward spot where i want the meetings to be quick because i'm pulling everybody out i mean i use the example of at the deerfield meeting that you know, when we did the uh, business director, the voting of that one in, um, there's other things I could have put on the agenda, but I was like, you know what, it's a last minute meeting, am I pulling everybody out and then keeping them there for an hour? But if the chairs were there and said, no, we really should handle that business then, we could have done that, you know, that kind of thing. So that's, that's the idea behind it. So I wanted to bring that to people's attention and just kind of, it's not really a vote for approval because okay. it can happen, but as long as there's no real vocal objections, I think it's probably a fine thing to do. They don't make the decisions for us. That's really That's, they can't do that. Everything will still come back to committees to, to discuss and I promise. I promise I will. And capital update. So I want to start putting that on there because you know we, as you know, the um, capital plan um, was approved by all town meetings. However, Deerfield had um, contingent upon the vote to be um, dead excluded. 
And so that vote is coming up on the 24th, for those of you watching at home. Um, and this is contingent on it. So, is there a score? You know, if there was a principal in the bill, I'd send you to his office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already have permission to do that. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, talk about deflating my ego. Um, that's, a how much? that's a big vote. I hope you, go. you guys are. Bob, do you know what the dollar amount is and what the debt exclusion is? Was it a 10 year? Well, they just want to be able to exclude the debt and, and, uh, because they don't want it to affect the tax rate. Because if you put in uh, half a million dollars, say the assessment is a half a million dollars in one year, uh, that would affect the tax rate. And it would cause, you know, they could probably get away with it, but they would rather not. They would rather have it excluded from that. Tax, so they can get it to raise their base. So I, I express my frustration to the that they did that they decided to set it up this way because what it did is on town meeting floor was voted, you know, by a large majority. It wasn't very close. However, who's going to go out for a June twenty fourth vote for debt exclusion? The people that want to say no. The, correct. Oh. And you may not get the same, or people think that this has gone through in. Who would vote not to debt exclude a short term, um, a short term borrow that we're looking for here of a small amount? When you really look at it, it's a, it's one point eight million dollars, but you take Deerfield's percentage of that. Let's say let's make it a pretty simple fifty percent ish. You're talking about seven hundred thousand dollars over ten years. That's not a large ask, and it's going into the same debt exclusion vote as the sewer system. Right. And so, which is 11, which is $19 million. And so we're kind of being packaged together with the sewer bill, um, not to, no pun intended there. Um, so I was just, you know, for those watching at home, make sure you, you know, it is a, a plan that's been two years in the making. If it doesn't get the debt exclusion vote, we'll be coming back next year. And, and that you know, will slow, delay all the projects that we put on hold um, to take care of. Bob Decker, if if it's debt excluded, then they can't use CPA funds like for the track portion. Well, I guess that it, up to the Conway can use their money, or Whitley can use their money, and someone can use whatever money. They well, want. how much money you guys got in CPA money? We get an awful lot. But, but if but it's debt excluded, then you can't use your they, CPA money. Anymore. They can choose. We will assess the towns their portion of the debt. So we're gonna the, the next year. And it's not next year, it's the following year. When we put our budget together, we are going to have cost of the school, cost of transportation, and debt. So we haven't had that in the last five years because we paid off the debt for the, re the remodeling of this building. So they will then get that bill, and then they can decide, hey, we want to use CPA funds this year, or B, we are going to add it to the tax rolls that will be debt excluded, or they can maybe they have the money in free cash, depending on each town gets hit by a different number. The smaller towns, for the most part, can the amount that we're asking for because of their percentage can find the money within their operating budgets to pay for this over the 10 year period. Deerfield has a larger chunk and because they have other, I think if they only had this and they didn't have the other things going on, they may not be as worried about the cost of it because it really isn't that, you talk about the overall, it's a lot of money, but when you talk about the overall ask for it, it's not, a, it's not that much money. But the but, 19 million that's gonna be have to be raised uh, for, for sewer improvements is, is an awful lot of money. 25% of it's going to be assessed to all the taxpayers in town, and the other 75% is going to be put to the ratepayers. So those of us in downtown, like this building, will be, uh, the rates for the sewer charges for this building will go the way up. They've already gone up a lot, and they're going to go up much worse. Roughly eleven seventy five per thousand gallons of water. The, the only thing I, I don't get with it, is, and I, I had this conversation with Trevor, is if it does get voted down, all it's saying is we can't debt exclude it. But it's still the bit the the proposals already passed. So all it means is then okay, it's passed. We can't debt exclude it. Well, now we gotta maybe do a two and a half override or something. I mean, they, I don't know. My understanding is that. The yeah. language was added to it. They added to the language that we put out to the towns and said, this is contingent on the passing of a debt exclusion. Why do they do that? I can't control the um, So 
my, my question is that the, the warrant articles this year included no uh, appropriation for the capital project. It just included the language approving of the well, project. See, but see, the thing is, they had the right to call a special town, a town meeting to talk about the vote that we took under the statute where we voted to incur the debt. And they, right, they had an opportunity to call a vote. They called a vote, right? And they called a vote when they passed the vote. They said, yeah, it's fine if the town will pass the debt exclusion. So but the debt exclusion only so applies to debt. We're not asking to, for debt this year. We're not yeah, asking but, for do, but, dime but one. Basically, what I'm saying is you probably asked the attorneys, and they were going to say that's going to be a great big stop sign because the town voted not to allow simple recurring the debt. Because they, they held a vote within the 60-day period. So we're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place, and hopefully we get enough people out that are going to support it. We can't spend any school funds to support it. It's got to be, you know, we can't. We but, can't. I mean, next year is the year, the first year we're going to be asking for money, probably. Yeah. yeah. So you, so we have to do. Given the timeline, we will not be asking next fiscal year. It won't be for 21. We won't be asking money for 22 until 22 because if you look at the timing of it. We're going to build the budget. So, but if this gets approved, the approval process to get the money, to get the bonding um, that we're going for, takes months. And so, so by the time we get this done, and I have a changeover of facilities and changeover of business managers, so there's the onboarding of that. So, we're talking about we will probably have the money set in hand, and I've learned to overestimate rather than underestimate November, December. Then we're going to start looking to bid out some, we're going to figure out which one we're going to go after first. And then we're going to have to bid out. And some of the larger projects, let's, let's use the track as everybody, this thing is so connected to the track, although there's a lot of other stuff attached to it. The track companies, I bet you, in January, are set for their summer. I mean, they're doing every, they're doing colleges and major big things all across. So we got to, now the actual bill from those things won't actually happen until the next fiscal year. So then we won't actually get that to assess the town until the following year. So that's why I was saying when we when I was presenting this to the town is that it really is two years off. You know, maybe, and we have to spend enough to make sure it falls within our 10 year plan. Maybe we don't, if we don't look at the track, we look at, maybe we could get this this area, the, the, the insulation and stuff above this, the infrastructure above here that's in there. Um, maybe that could happen and start in June and we could get that first set of bills that would go. But again, the kids can't be here for the majority of these projects between you know the parking lot issues, this the issue issue, we can't really shut this down for the amount of time it has to shut down the track. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to figure out because there's a lot of pricing that has to do with there's the time. You're, you're competing against all of their other, it's New England. You can only work on a track for so many months out of the year. Um, and so what are you going to do? What seasons are we gonna affect? Are we gonna affect football? Are we gonna affect track season? You know what I mean? You know, and I say football and all other sports that use that field. So anyway, there's a lot of kind of moving parts here. But the thing is, nobody's going to approve the bonds if we don't have the debt exclusion. If we don't get the debt exclusion, I think we will be contacting our attorney, and it probably won't be our current attorney. We probably have to have an attorney that, that follows the finance attorney um, to find out what our actions are. But my guess is we have to go back again. And then, to be honest with you, now that we're a couple years down the road with those numbers, we probably have to go back with adjusted numbers, because you got to remember those numbers that we started with are from a year and a half ago. You know what I mean? That we said they're going to be some movement, then we got to kind of adjust. And so, I'm not saying it will come in larger, but we have to look at it. So you know, they're only excluding one number, Bob, on this? There's two different one. things. One is going to exclude the $19 million from, so that, that can be debt excluded for the source, and then the for the frontier. Are they two front. separate? Yeah, two separate articles. And I've asked them to change the wording to be clear, because when we voted the, when we voted at all the warrants, it said the total amount that we were asking for, the 1.8. But when you talk about debt exclusion, I asked them if they could pull out exactly what Deerfield's responsible portion of it, because they're not debt excluding 1.8, they're exclu debt excluding probably around 700,000. You know what I mean? Of what it, what their responsibility of it is for. So they said that they're going to do that. We're working with Trevor um, on the select board there um, as well to make sure that those numbers. That may be too late because the wording's already on. I asked that a month and a half ago. So well, if they changed the wording so that they just made sure that it was it's clear. Posted. I didn't read the, 
We can ask Trevor yeah. tomorrow then. Well, if it's already posted, then we yes. can go look. The, uh, and if, 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 if it fails, you can get right back on, go, do a, get, get on the warrant in September and they're in, this, in the, a meeting where you're much, yeah, in, in, you're much more likely to succeed then because then you'll be in the general election in November. Well, I mean, um, the, there's a lot of, I don't, I, I'm hoping that cooler minds prevail in the sense that we get it, that we get it the way we should get it and we get it with that vote on the 24th. I mean, you want to start, we can start talking about that, but we can just vote again to take on debt and then towns all have to have a special meeting if they want to stop us. You know what I mean? And so you talk about doing things like that. They've already got a vote we, and we could justify it by saying we already have a vote in open town meeting of approval. But that's one of that's, let's leave that discussion for if it is failed. I mean, there's a lot of different, or we line it up for town meetings for fall. You know what I mean? If you do, you know, if they do special town meeting in the fall or, or we package it all back together, get to, that subcommittee together and we put a new package together for spring of next year. I mean, those are kind of our different, but there's a lot of different things we can do. Hopefully it'll be point. I, I, I'm hoping it's a good point. Are you home that week? Uh, yes. I am, I'm but I'm going, going, to the, I'm going to the beach. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm, going to do a, I'm going to do an absentee ballot. <laughs> but the question I have is, um, it appears that we've got roughly two or three hundred thousand dollars in our current budget that's not, not encumbered. And could we usually in June decide on certain projects we want to do for the summer? Is there something that we could allocate forty-five or fifty thousand dollars for that we could knock off ahead of time, assuming so, that there might be a problem? So Bob brings up a good point in the sense of okay, so we're looking at we're going to be looking at what do we have for excess, and then what are we looking at for E and D when we get that, and then we see. Part of our E and D, we've always been starting to use, not always. We've recently been our kind of our mentality is a percentage to, to drop down the assessment, percentage to knock off some of our capital improvements, and not go back to the towns for, and a percentage to hold for um, emergencies. Part of our we don't want to, and we can talk about this more, and I can prepare it for a meeting. But we don't want to go knocking off parts of the capital plan that we've gone to the towns for because that's only part of the total list. And what we said is we're pulling out all the small things and we're only putting the big things on the list. We have a we have a laundry list. If you remember that, remember that laundry list of small things that up to thirty thousand dollars that we could do. To go to the second party question is what can we do this summer? It's it's tough at now June fifteenth to get things done for this summer, especially when I got Bob leaving in the first week of August. So you know we have things lined up that were amongst the elementary schools that are getting taken care of. Um, some of the, the, the general kind of things that we're fixing in the building, but you know, I'm not prepared tonight to come back with that new things. But I'm because I'm kind of top, in that tough spot uh, with the change over there. So we might, you know, when we get to what we have for excess, we'll look at our E and D, and there might be some things that we can pluck away at the middle of next year during but, vacation but, weeks. But we could <clears throat> encumber before the first of July without having to take it out of E and D after the first of July. Right. If we knew we had. The boat fails, and we know it's going to be six or eight months before you get it straightened out. It might be some of those something we might want. But to some of them have to go out and bid. We may not be able to get it done. Well, this the summer. big stuff. I'm not talking the great big stuff, but I'm talking. We do have a long. I mean, that, that, and that's with that. So what we need to do is early next year. Well, after this thing, I what will. Ha I haven't thought that much forward in the sense of it failing. Because I'm a positive person. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but I'm we would probably get still. we'd get the building that that the capital improvement subcommittee back together we would talk about next step about looking at the, you know, the different things and then make a recommendation i imagine back to the the frontier committee about how to move forward you know and then also that that same subcommittee we said would help oversee those other projects that we would be going after yeah. I, i'll use E&D right now but any other you know other excess funds that we said as part of our programming is we want to do more projecting ahead. These are what we are asking. There's no surprises what's coming down the pike for repairs. More transparencies. Everybody can look, you know, I want to be at that list. Everybody can look at. We knew the next three things that are coming are going to be this, this, and this. And as the money comes up, we know, unless something breaks and it moves up the list, you know, that kind of stuff. But in the past, it's been kind of this, I know it's been more of a, hasn't been really been a surprise, but it hasn't been as transparent as it should have been. So it can be. I remember in the committee there was one night when we did talk about the problems with um, 
midsummer elections in general and that how the town meeting schedule sets us up for bad attendance, low, low, low voter turnout elections, which are historically really difficult to win if you're the side trying to spend money. Um, and and like, part, of, part of what we should be thinking about is, is, that, is exactly stuff like that. And, you, the, historically, you have a much greater chance of passing these things if you're in a general election when all of the voters show up, um, which is November, which means you have to be in the warrants for the September town meetings, which means that we can't meet in the way we normally do in September and have it approved or anything approved in time. We're, we're, we're structurally not capable of moving that fast. So I don't know what the solution is to that, but um, if you're going to be on a September warrant, which is I would, I would hope we try to make that happen because the chance of success improve if we can make that happen. Well, we may have to move meet during the summer. Which nobody likes to do. Years ago, it was always done that way. Yeah, because you have, again, we're going down this rabbit hole of what ifs, but. I mean, this is set up to fail. This is set up to maximize the chances of failing. Whoever was responsible Who's for Who's the spearhead on the, the solution? Skip? Skip. They excluded that when they did these major renovations here before. But it's also it's, it's also yeah. fitting in with their current. They have a big sewer price tag, and so the putting the two together may not have been, you know, may not have been, you know, they're not looking at may not have looked at it, the, the failure rate of it. Maybe they're looking at this will help pass it. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what the what the mindset was. It didn't have to be set up that way. They well, could have they, they could have approved it and said, "Hey, do you want a debt exclude this?" And everybody's going to say, "Who's going to say, oh no, I'd like my taxes to go up permanently forever?" Um, so that's the part that kind of caught me when it came through it. But it's like, no, they legally can. And I called the attorney at the time, and they said, "No, legally they can set it up that way." So I think Carolyn's strategy was that she wanted to get the appropriation passed. And tell me because she was hoping that the infrastructure, infrastructure bill from Congress was going to pass. And that hasn't happened, and it's likely not going to happen at this point. But she was hoping to get on the gravy train because uh, Ways and Means, Richie Neal from Springfield's on, McGovern's on the Rules Committee, and somebody else is on something else, and she thought it was going to be a cakewalk. No cake, no walk. No. Okay. Well, we'll we'll see what we'll happens on the twenty fourth, and if it doesn't go our way, we'll have to we'll have to talk about what our next steps are. Right? That's just um, we get the committee together properly. If we need to talk to the committee right after the vote or something, if we need to build that first step, and then the capital committee. committee yep. We get the building committee together. Regardless. We could yeah, we could get the capital the the capital we'll call the capital committee and the building committee are two. It probably should be called the capital. We'll have to come figure out what the name of it's going to be moving forward. But that committee could get together and then help help decide. You know, rather than pulling the joint meeting together, get together, kind of strategize the different options with those. With that, I'm kind of thinking out loud here, so you know, shut me down if I, if I stumble. But um, we can look at the different options. Also, get the research rather than getting the full committee together and say, what if, what if, what if? I take notes. I have to go get legal <coughs> guidance and that kind of stuff. This smaller committee could do that. Um, and look at all those different things. Can you talk about whether or not we go to get on a fall warrant, or do we force a fall warrant? You know, because this committee also has that power too. You know, so it's you know, yeah. So, right. Didn't expect that. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Let's get done with the reports here. I have no reports. How about the collaborative? The collaborative. Uh, last week I went to the graduation of the HEC program. We had one graduate from Frontier. It was a nice program. And uh, the new state senator uh, made a nice speech. And it was, nice. it was a nice day in Sluder Grove. And we went. Cool. And uh, Don and I both went to Frontier and graduated 55 years ago. So, well, that was nice. Is that called the HEC graduation? It's Hampshire Educational Collaborative, and they've always called it HEC. Okay. And, uh, they have a heck of a graduate. I mean, it was only, it's probably 15 students. You know, 
Don't be that person. But it takes care of the need for children. And uh, it's important because we could run that program ourselves here. We don't have enough of the students to do it. And, uh, other than that, the uh, deputy director is leaving. The human resources person down there is leaving also. So we're going to be looking for a new deputy director or something like that. And they're looking for a human resources person. Good job for you, Bob. I, I don't want to work. <laughs> Not that hard. Thank you, Bob. I think they got somebody for human resources, but the other they're still trying to figure out what, how they want to go for. Okay. George? I just have a brief report. Three. We did. It. We also had graduation. Uh, we graduated um, more than half. Um, yes. Last week. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that particular student graduated from here at the same time. Ah, uh, right. They get, a, they get a front row bonus. All right. There we go. So I've got three. Uh, I've got three items. Uh, I just want to let you guys and the audience uh, make you guys aware that uh, we're planning on making uh, available. We have an online payment platform called Family ID that we're currently using for our sports fees. We're looking to to move it to. Um, I'm, to, I'm sorry, I apologize, we're using it for our, paying for lunch right now. We want to put all of our, our athletic fees on the same platform as well as our testing fees, um, yes. like AP testing and things like that as well. Uh, there would be like a slight, I think they, I think they charge, that's like a 2.9% 2 .9 like, like an interest fee if you, if you pay using their system, but we think it'll be a lot more convenient than having parents or give checks to kids and having the kids bring them in and whatnot. So we're hoping to, uh, we're hoping to, uh, to make headway with that um, next year. Um, I'm working with Scott Paul on making that happen. Uh, second item is Polly Bath is going to be coming in August uh, doing uh, PD for our staff. Uh, uh, she does primarily PD for uh, behavior management, so we're inviting all of our staff to come to that. There'll be an invitation sent out uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, so they'll be able to come for that. And then just to, uh, uh, to highlight the fact that our boys baseball and girls softball teams are currently in postseason play, uh, I want to just wish them congratulations and, and good luck this week. Uh, last day of school is this Friday. We've got a half day. And then we come back. Uh, staff comes back on the 27th, and everybody else comes back on the 28th. There you go. And I forgot to say, but graduation was really nice the other night. I think I handed out, correct me if I'm wrong, about 88 diplomas. 92. 92. I thought he said 97. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the paper was wrong. 92. I think 92 were there. Okay. 92 were there, and a couple yep. chose not to yep. yeah. But it was really nice. The weather was almost perfect. Yes. As it was hot with a suit on, there was three or four of us with suits on. And as that sun went down, it cooled off like real quick. And it was it was really nice evening for, for graduation. Yeah, it's really nice. Darius, what do you have, sir? Um, just kind of the updates. Um, our, we're currently interviewing director of facilities. Um, you all have my the superintendent evaluation I sent out. Please um, get those in. If you have any problems, let me know. Um, this has to do with Unit 38. The summer meeting had to do with them, but then we also may have to have a summer meeting based on the capital improvement. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the summer administrative tree, what we're doing on an administrative level. Um, we have on the 20th a, uh, our first retreat day where we're going to concentrate on our district goals and develop our professional development plan for the entire year, uh, both uh, with the elementaries and the secondary, and also look at our different areas of focus. Um, as you know, we, I sent out a, uh, we're also going to review the, the survey that I sent out that you probably all um, saw um, that I sent out to families. We can look through that data as well and help use that to help apply to our, our goals. This next day we are doing um, a work day, which we're working on aligning a lot of our procedures, not policies, you guys kind of, we align all our policies up here, but our procedures, from forms to those kind of things amongst the different elementaries, and also um, secondary is a little bit tighter in some of those areas because of, there's additional administrators, but when you're a single principal and, you know, is your field trip form up to date? Um, so we're going to kind of work to work, not going to kind of, we are going to work together on that. Um, and there, there's already a, quite a list of stuff that we're going to work on that the principals are putting together collaboratively uh, in planning. Um, on the 27th and 28th, we, are, we were bringing in the curriculum management solution. Um, this is the, uh, this is a work that, this is a group that Sarah has done her, uh, Dr. 
Sarah Mitchell, Dr. Mitchell, who's done a lot of her, um, she goes out and does audits of major school systems with this group, um, and she was going to bring them in to do a training of, I said was, because right now it's being put on hold because the person who was going to be with us has come down with an illness and can't come to present, and so we're trying to, right now rework what we're going to do on those days and have that person come later so i'm still presenting it because we're eventually going to go use this group um, to really look at evaluating our curriculum and then also look at um, classroom instruction and where we need to go to improve you know we do very well our, our, our teachers are excellent um, and but we have to constantly figure out how we're going to move that needle um, to improve our, every year so um, that's what's going on there and then that's it okay um question Eighth grade field trip to Washington. Does that still happen next year? Because the parents aren't hearing anything. So and, and so I wasn't here at the end of the year last year. Do the parents usually hear at the end of the at the end of the of the year? So part of the back the, to school packet is yeah. is the welcome and then kind of lays out what's right. going on yeah. with Washington yeah. DC. So yeah. nope, it's well, far as the question. So yes. Yeah. Do you want to be a chaperone this year, Bob? I think so. <laughs> So basically, the rollout of that is they get stuff in the back to school packet, and then um, their first meeting about it is we combine it with part of open house. The eighth grade sets a time, please come at this time to grab the first discussion about DC. So, cool. That's so it's coming. All right. So uh, next on agenda, next on agenda, we're going to be going to executive session. So you want to pack up and leave. George is going to be invited. Yeah, and right. Allison, you could just say goodbye to you, I guess. So you may come back to regular session for a vote. Oh, okay. So you have to make that make okay. that known. That but if you want to, I'm not sure how long it's going to be. If you want to stay, she could stay and wait, or it's up to it's well, they can stay you, and wait for. Are you going to be voting on anything? It, they're going to decide if they are going to take action on an item. Okay. Um, which I mean, basically, you can tell you what it is because they're going to talk about yeah. union and non-union um, salary schedule. So if they would make a decision on how they, what they're going to do. Okay. Yeah, well, we're going to uh, pursue MGL Chapter 38, Section 21A4 to discuss the deployment of security person devices and strategies with respect therefore, and then also Chapter 38, Section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions pursuant to negotiation of non-union personnel collective bargaining sessions, contract negotiation with non union personnel. Oh, second. Roll call, Damien? Yes. Phil? Yes. yes. Mary? Yes. 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 Bob? And Mark's invited in with this? Mark. Ready. I need a motion to come out of the executive session, please. So moved. So moved. You got that? Uh, roll call, Dean. Yes. Phil. Yes. yes. Mary. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Ready, ready, sir. Ready to start writing. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Move the following salary increases for non-union personnel effective July one. Persons making fifty thousand dollars or more. In their, in their fiscal year 19 annual rate will receive a 1% increase. People making less than $50,000 a year in their FY19 annual rate will be receiving a 2% increase effective July 1. Second. I think I said that right. I think you did too. You can check it. All in favor? So moved. Thank you. Who will we adjourn? Unless you've got something else to talk about. Please go. No. <laughs> Please go. No. <laughs> well, I'll make a motion. I second.